Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back again for our uh, series of lectures on the glories of Vrindavan Dham. I'm very happy to be with you. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Deshutarane All glories to Sri Prabhupada. So today, I would like to continue discussing the glories um, of Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohan. In our last talk, we discussed the history of Madan Mohan and the um, wonderful service rendered to him or to them, the divine couple, Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohan, by um, their dear devotee, Srila Sanatana Goswami. And amongst the many lessons that um, Srila Sanatana Goswami taught us is um, how essential deity worship is in the process of Krishna consciousness. It's actually described as one of the five angas or limbs of devotional service in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhyalila 22.128. Sadhu Sangha Nama Kirtana Bhagavata Shravana Mathura Vasa Sri Mutira Shradaya Shevana. Quote, one should associate with devotees, chant the holy names of the Lord, hear Srimad Bhagavatam, reside at Mathura or Vrindavan, and worship the deity with faith and veneration. <clears throat> and I've seen in my travels around the world that devotees everywhere, they really relish the service of, of deity worship, to have such a personal service to Krishna in his deity form. And this is actually um, a very unique gift that Sridhar Prabhupada brought to the Western world. We must thank Sridhar Prabhupada for that wonderful gift of deity worship. And the fact that devotees uh, enjoy worshiping their deities, that's Shastrik. It's described um, by Lord Kapila Dev. He tells us Mother Devahuti in Srimad Bhagavatam uh, 325.35. Quote, my dear mother, my devotees always see the smiling uh, face of my form with eyes like the uh, rising morning sun. They like to see my various transcendental forms, which are all very benevolent. And my devotees also talk favorably with me. <laughs> That's interesting. His, Krishna says his devotees talk favorably with him in the form of the deity. It's sometimes said that um, deity worship is for neophytes. We hear that sometimes. But I was reading recently, um, once Jagannath Das Babaji had to um, give up some deities that had been under his care. And afterwards he said famously, I cannot live without deities. Please find me others. He said, I cannot live without deities. Please find me others. And in the verse we quoted above, um, Lord Kapila, again he says that devotees um, sometimes talk with their deities. But in the purport to that verse, Sridhar Prabhupada clarifies that actually only advanced devotees converse with the deities. <laughs> He writes, quote, <clears throat> Devotees express their minds before the deity. In many instances, the deity also gives answers. But one must be a very elevated devotee in order to be able to speak with the Supreme Lord. Then he says that, um, however, even aspiring devotees can get immense benefit from worshiping the deity. He writes, and I quote again, but even the third-class devotee who offers obeisances with great devotion, who thinks of the Lord, uh, sees the Lord in the temple, and brings uh, flowers and fruits to the deity, becomes imperceptibly liberated. Yeah, so deity worship is for the neophyte devotee and for the advanced devotee. For the advanced devotee, Krishna may speak to him in the deity form. And for the aspiring devotee, by worshiping the deity under the proper rules and regulations, Prabhupada said he becomes imperceptibly liberated. 
So during the time that Srila Sanatan Goswami was worshipping Madan Mohan in Vrindavan, many devotees were keen to have Madan Mohan's darshan. And one such devotee was Srila Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami. We know that after the departure of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Vaishnav community requested um, Srila Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami to um, write about the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. And of course, that was a huge responsibility. So what did Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami do? He went to the temple of Madan Mohan in Vrindavan, and he asked the Lord's permission to write. <coughs> and while praying to the deity, actually in front of the deity, um, Madan Mohan caused a garland to slip from his neck to the ground as a sign of divine reciprocation. And the Pujari, he quickly picked up that garland and um, he gave it to um, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, who it's described immediately began composing the, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, he gives credit in, in that great literature to Madan Mohan. In the beginning of the book, he, he, he writes, quote, Chaitanya Charitamrita is not my writing, but the dictation of Madan Mohan. My writing is like the repetition of a parrot. As a wooden doll is made to dance by a magician, I write as the Lord orders me. Very humble. Then he concludes with a, a very intimate thought, quote, I accept as my family deity, Madan Mohan, whose worshippers are Raghunath Das Goswami, Rupa Goswami, and Srinata Goswami. And um, also he, he says in Chaitanya Charitamrita that he was, um, he felt himself very unqualified to, to write such an immensely important work. But um, again, by the grace of Madan Mohan, he achieved uh, that great wonder. He writes, quote, I have now become too old and disturbed by invalidity. While writing, my hands tremble. I cannot remember anything, nor can I see or hear properly. Still, I write, and this is a great wonder. So this is a sign of a great devotee that their great achievements, they all attributed to the mercy of the Lord. Yes, Madan Mohan, Shishi Radha Madan Mohan. So it appears from uh, our class last Friday and today that Madan Mohan was dear to a number of great souls, and therefore he's dear to us. We heard about Brajrana, Advaita Charya, Damodar Chobe and his family, Sanatan Goswami, Ramdas Kapoor, and today, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj. Unfortunately, <coughs> years later, after all those great souls had departed, a very dark period descended on the Vaishnav community in Vrindavan. It was the year um, 1670, when a Muslim tyrant by the name, I don't even want to repeat his name, but Aurangzeb became uh, emperor and he ruled from his capital in Agra. And at one point, he um, ordered the destruction of the temples in Vrindavan out of envy. Fortunately, that decree reached Vrindavan in time and most of the deities in the major temples were hidden very quickly, as was the case with Madan Mohan, uh, Gobindaji, and Gopinath. We discussed that history in our, in our last class. It's a long story, but almost 60 years later, these three deities were, you could say, taken in uh, by that famous Rajasthani king we talked about, Jai Singh II, and he built an entire city to protect the deities. Um, you know, people build cities <laughs> for various reasons, but I think it's unusual to hear that a ruler 
he built he builds a city in honor of God to protect God <laughs> and uh, of course the name of that city is Jaipur which translates into the city of victory and eventually um, all three deities um, they had their own temples in Jaipur and they were uh, revered and served by all the residents of Jaipur so much so that the deities never came back to Vrindavan sometimes I, w I was wondering why didn't those historic deities come back to Braj but as we'll hear later, hear later on in the class Krishna is controlled by the love of his devotees wherever he is in the creation and the residents of, J of Jaipur in the past and even to this present day they have so much love for Radha Govinda and this is an overwhelming experience that any devotee can have when you go to Jayapur and you go for darshan of, of Radha Govinda, especially for the Mongol Artik with the, the opening of the curtain a little later on in, in the morning. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people come. It's, or if you want a bhakti experience, that's where you'll get it. So the deities were there. <coughs> um, Madan Mohan and uh, Gobindaji and Gopinath, they, they were being worshipped by different groups of devotees. Every devotee has their favorite deities. <laughs> and so it was after some time that the daughter of the king, Jai, king, uh, Jai Singh II, his daughter fell in love with Madan Mohan. And this is love. This is real love to, to fall in love with, with Krishna, with God. There's a, there's a beautiful uh, verse uh, in this regard by um, Sri Rupa Goswami in Padyavali. Rupa Goswami is addressing Krishna. And, and I, I quote, um, Just as the minds of young women are attracted to young men, and the minds of young men are attracted to young women, may my mind be attracted to you, Krishna. That's the whole process of Krishna consciousness, isn't it? We discussed a little bit in the last class. Um, to distance ourselves from the affairs of this world and become completely absorbed in Krishna's loving pastimes with his devotees in Vrindavan. And we do that, as we're doing now, by hearing about Krishna's um, loving dealings with his devotees. So this princess, she worshipped Madan Mohan with all her heart and soul. And, um, but when she turned, I think it was 16, um, it was time for her to, to be married. And in those days, or even today, here in India, marriages were arranged. So Jai Singh II, <coughs> he contacted the king of Koroli. Koroli is a, a city, maybe, I think it's about four hours from, um, from Jaipur. Sometimes we go from Vrindavan to Karoli to Jaipur in our Purikamas. So the king of Jaipur, he contacted the king of Karoli. And uh, that king's name was um, Raj Gopal Singh. And Jai Singh II suggested uh, a marriage between his daughter and Raj Gopal Singh's son, who was a prince, of course. And I was reading he was um, a real Kattriya. He was very tall. Actually, the Rajasthani um, warriors were always uh, quite tall, I, w I was reading, very effective in combat. And this prince was very handsome and um, well-educated. So the astrology was done, and it proved to be a good arrangement. But when Jai Singh II happily informed his daughter about this arrangement and described the prince. I mean, what young girl would not want to marry a prince like that? What did she say? She said, I'm not interested, Father, for I have given my heart to Madan Mohan. How can a prince, she said, whose body is made of flesh and bones compared to Madan Mohan, who attracts even Cupid. I have given my life to be a chaste servant of my love, Madan Mohan. 
So I will not go anywhere else. I will not go anywhere without him. <laughs> this is Atmani Vedanam, full surrender to the Lord. What a wonderful Vaishnavi. But father was adamant. It was his duty to get his daughter married, so he kept insisting, you have to marry the Prince of Karoli. <laughs> At the same time, being a father, he didn't want to hurt the, his, his daughter's feelings. So he came up with an idea. He contacted, again, the, 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 the king of Karoli, and he said, sir, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, we're going to go ahead with this arrangement. I'll give my, my daughter in marriage to the prince. But the dowry, not generally when the, the father of the bride, he has to give a dowry along with the bride, some riches. But Jai Singh II, he said, the riches are not going to be in the form of gold or silver or jewels or fine silks. The dowry is something priceless. I'm going to send with my daughter the deity of Radha Madan Mohan. Because he knew that's the only way that his daughter would go. <laughs> but I'll, I'll give Madan Mohan, or Radha Madan Mohan, um, on, on the condition that you build him or them a beautiful temple. So, of course, you know, these are Rajput kings. They're, many of them were Krishna conscious. So, um, the king of Karoli, he, yes. He's, he's getting a beautiful daughter-in-law and he's getting the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What an arrangement. So he agreed. And I was reading, it's so interesting, that a temple was built very fast. The idea is that um, the princess would only come to the prince when there was a, a beautiful uh, temple built. And I read that the prince, um, Raj Gopal Singh's son, he was one of the main architects in designing and building the temple. I wonder why. <laughs> of course, we must credit him also. He's probably a devotee, but, you know, she, she's uh, the, the daughter of um, Jai Singh II. She is described as a very a very beautiful girl, uh, also very well educated and, um, and learned in the arts. But of course, her most distinguishing quality was her bhakti, or his, her devotion for the, for the Lord. Yes, so an interesting footnote is that on the day of the marriage, Jai Singh's daughter, the, the princess, she arranged that instead of her coming into the ceremony on a palaquin, which was the custom at that time, I'm, I think even today, she arranged that the deity of Madan Mohan came on the palaquin and she walked behind him. Wow. <laughs> she arranged that but Don Mohan came on the Falcon, and she very humbly walked behind him. What a wonderful example. And then um, Madan Mohan was placed on a nearby altar, but throughout the whole ceremony, she simply looked at the deity. <laughs> she never even looked at her husband. <laughs> and when um, she was asked if she would love and serve her husband throughout their lives, she smiled, and with her focus on Madan Mohan, she said, yes, I will love and serve him throughout my entire life and beyond. This is devotion. I know no one, the gopis say, I know no one but Krishna as my Lord, and he shall remain so even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me brokenhearted by not being present before me. He's always my worshipable Lord, unconditionally. That's from Lord Chaitanya Shikshastaka prayers. I know, I know no one but Krishna is my Lord, and he shall always remain so. Even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me brokenhearted by not being present before me, he's always my worshipable Lord, unconditionally. So, we have so many heroes and heroines in Krishna consciousness to follow. Great Vaishnavas and great Vaishnavis who teach us the art of love, the art of devotion to, to Krishna. <laughs> but again, uh, Madan Mohan has melted the hearts of many 
through the ages. And I've been reading not only great sadhus and members of royalty, but the uneducated, the poor, and the destitute as well. Krishna captures the heart, hearts of everyone. Um, he's not, um, how would you say? He's inclined towards everyone. Everyone's his son and daughter, and he wants all, everyone to come back home, back to Godhead. And I was reading uh, that um, years later, after um, Madan Mohan and his consort, Srimati Radharani, Radharani, had been moved to Karoli, during the reign of another king, his name was um, Harikashpal, Raj Harikashpal. There was an old woman who lived in a village near Karoli. It's a really beautiful story. And her only source of income was selling, was selling milk from uh, her herd of, uh, small, uh, a small herd of cows that she had. And, and every day this very poor, humble lady, she would um, go to uh, Karoli, um, and on the way, um, to sell her milk, and on the way she would thin the milk from water, with water from a, a creek that she had to cross. And I think they still do this. So you can sell more milk. They put a little water in there and you can sell more milk. Uh, they even do that today. And uh, so she would thin the milk with water from a creek. Then in Karoli, before going to the market, she would offer um, a cup of milk uh, to Madan Mohan by going to the temple. She had a special cup. She put the milk in there and she'd give it to the Pajari and the Pajari would offer it to Madan Mohan. This was her seva. This was her life and soul, really. Now, one time it's described as she was thinning the milk with the creek water, a little fish swam in unnoticed into the pot and from there later into the cup of milk, which she gave to uh, Madan Mohan's Pujari to offer the Lord. So he's offering her a cup of milk with a little fish inside. And as the Pujari was about to make that offering, he noticed the tiny fish and he became very angry. And he rejected the milk, scolded the woman, and he actually went so far as to, to forbid her forbid her to make any more offerings to the deities. This is a great apparat you have committed, although it was done unknowingly. And the poor old woman, she was heartbroken that her only service to Madan Mohan had been taken away from her. So she returned home and she cried and she cried and she cried and she fasted. And she continued praying to the, to the Lord for forgiveness. She was determined, as described, to somehow regain her service to the Lord. So she prayed to Madan Mohan for guidance, hoping that somehow uh, she would be um, rectified and regain his favor. <laughs> so Madan Mohan took pity on this old woman. Obviously her bhakti was very deep, it was very pure. When she prayed to Krishna, he lent an ear, he really listened, and he reciprocated. So, it's really interesting that he took the form, Madan Mohan, took the form of a young um, mendicant, a young sadhu. And one evening, he came to her village, and he came to her home, her hut, humble dwelling, and he knocked on the door. It was actually quite, quite late at night, I was reading. And when she answered the door, she saw this young, handsome uh, boy. And she was surprised. She said, young man, what do you want? She, she said, where, where have you come from? I have not seen you in these parts before. So the little mendicant, he said, uh, mother, I, I live in Vrindavan. And I have come to take darshan of our Madan Mohan. So that just captured her heart. And then he said, please, it's late and the storm is coming. Allow me to stay here tonight. And tomorrow I will go to Karoli and see my beloved Lord. So she felt very compel compelled to accommodate 
the young sadhu, the mendicant. So she said to him, all right, come in. My house is yours. And as he came in, she said, but um, you know how they do in India. Tell me, what can I offer you to eat? So the young boy, he said, mother, I only drink milk. If you can offer me a little milk, I'll be happy with that. But um, the only milk that the old woman had was the same cup in which the fish had previously been in, because obviously <laughs> they, just, they took the fish out. But that milk, you know, had been quote unquote contaminated by the by the fish. So she said, "I I, I can't. I mean, I, 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 let me go out and milk a cow." So she started to go out the door, and the and the young boy said, "No, no, mother, wait. Give me what you have now." But she explained it. Previously, there was a fish in this milk. So the young boy he said, "Okay, in the future, um, you please carefully observe your milk while while diluting it in the creek." <laughs> Somehow he <we> knew, <laughs> but for now, I'm too hungry to wait. Please give me that cup of milk as it is. So unable to change this young boy's mind, the old woman gave him the milk. And then that young mendicant, he drank it with great satisfaction. And he said, Mother, you know, that milk was very tasty. It's the best milk I've ever drunk. And he said, now I'm feeling sleepy, so I'm going to take rest. And he went over and took rest on, uh, on a small cot. But the old woman, she was still distressed by her apparent offense earlier offense to Madan Mohan. So she stayed awake most of the night. And when it became very chilly sometime after midnight, she took her only uh, quilt, her only blanket, an old quilt it's described, and she went and she covered the young boy with, with the quilt. She went back to her room and finally she fell asleep. And as she drifted off, she dreamt of Madan Mohan. And in that dream, the Lord smiled and he said, quote, <clears throat> My dear devotee, why are you still fasting, thinking that I have refused your milk? Don't you know that I have come to your house today and taken milk directly from your hands? Please continue with your service. Bring me a cup of milk every day the Pujari will not object any further. Now get up and break your fast. So she woke up with a start, startled like that. She looked around and she saw the, the, young, the young boy, the mendicant, he, he disappeared. She looked around the house, she couldn't find him. And she was very surprised that in, in the place where he was um, sleeping, where she'd covered him with the old quilt, she saw something very familiar to her. She saw um, the, the, the um, very fine um, yellow silk shawl that, that the Pujari often used to wrap around the transitive form of Madan Mohan in the temple. <laughs> that's, that's what she saw there. So she immediately understood that the young Sado had been none other than the Lord himself. With, with the dream and the fact that Madame Mohan's favorite yellow cloth was there in her house. So she was overwhelmed with ecstasy. It took some time for her to compose herself, it's described. But then following Madame Mohan's orders in, in, the, in her dream, she broke her fast, she bathed, she milked her cows, and she left for Coroli. She stopped at the creek, <laughs> uh, and she um, thinned the milk from the cows, made sure a fish didn't enter the pot to go into the cup. And meanwhile, the Pujari and Karoli, um, upon waking that morning, he went in to begin serving the deity, and he was shocked. He saw the deity was wearing an old, an old um, quilt. He said, wait a minute. 
I dress the Lord in that in his favorite silk, yellow silk shawl. Well, what's this torn quilt? <laughs> he couldn't understand what happened. But later that morning, when the old woman arrived, as she used to do previously, because now she'd received an order from the Lord, with a cup of milk from Madan Mohan, she was also carrying this very opulent yellow shawl, which the Lord had worn the day before. Pujari couldn't believe his eyes. So when she handed the milk <laughs> to the Pujari to offer to the Lord, she also handed the shawl. And she said, Pujari ji, Madan Mohan came to my house last night to drink milk. It was dark when he left. He must have mistaken my quilt for his shawl. So the Pujari was speechless. So he, he could only conclude that what she said was true. So he very humbly assured her that from that day on, she could continue with her seva of offering Madan Mohan a cup of milk each day. And let us remember that this pastime was orchestrated by the Lord himself out of love for his devotee. Shishi Radha Madan Mohanji Ki. <laughs> so yes, so many wonderful pastimes. All these deities have wonderful pastimes with their, with their devotees. So I think we have other subjects to cover, but I think before we conclude our discussions on the glories of Srila Srinathan Goswami's Ishtadeva, um, Madan Mohan, Shishi Radha Madan Mohan. Madan Mohan, the, the attractor of Cupid, we should also s say something about um, his consort, Madan Mohan Mohini, Srimati Radharani, who is um, very famous as being the attractor of the attractor of Cupid, attract the attractor of the attractor of Cupid. We discussed in detail in the last class how you know Cupid, the god of love, became so attracted to Krishna. So Krishna is the attractor of Cupid. But we also know that um, his consort, Srimati Radharani, she attracts the heart of Madan Mohan. So she is Madan Mohan Mohini. She attracts him by her uh, deep love. And it's no secret amongst Gaudiya Vaishnavas that, uh, that although God, by definition, if you go to the uh, dictionary, if you look at the dictionary, the Lord, by definition, is the supreme controller. Um, but Krishna, uh, the Lord, is controlled by the love of his devotees. That's described in many beautiful verses in, in our scriptures, some prominent verses. But I was reading the other day, I was reading in, in my studies, I was reading Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. And in Hari Bhakti Sudodaya, chapter 14, verse 29, there's a very beautiful verse to, um, to show how Krishna is controlled. Well, he says he's controlled by the love of his devotees. And um, it's Lord Nishringadev speaking to Prahlad Maharaj. And Lord Nishringadev says, Sada mukto pi baroshmi, bhaktena sneha raju bi, ajito pi jito ham tire, avasho pi bashi krita. Very beautiful Sanskrit. And I quote Lord Nishringadev Although I am eternally liberated, although I am eternally liberated, I am bound by, by my devotees' ropes of love. In this way, Although I am ajita, unconquerable, I become jita, conquered by them. And although I cannot be controlled by anyone, I become fully controlled by my devotees. I'm going to recite that again. Lord Nishringade, from the mouth of the Lord. <laughs> although I am eternally liberated, I am bound by my devotees' ropes of love. In this way, although I am ajita, unconquerable, I become jita, conquered by them. And although I cannot be controlled by anyone, I become fully controlled by my devotees. So it's a transcendental fact. And amongst his devotees, um, the love of Srimati Radharani is supreme. 
Thus she, more than anyone else, controls Krishna by her love, and thus the name Madan Mohan Mohini. And just how Krishna is swayed or controlled by her love, again, it's seen in many of um, many Vrindavan pastimes, but uh, w one of those pastimes is, is my favorite. And it's gleaned from the the following Shastras, I'd like to share it with you. It's gleaned from uh, Govinda Lilamrita, Vidagna Madhava, and Vadarasa Sudhinidhi by Srila Pabodananda Saraswati, and um, also in Srila Rupa Goswami's Padavali. It's a wonderful pastime. So, here we go. <laughs> Once upon a time, uh, Shimati, Radharani, Shimati Radharani was becoming restless um, due to separation from Krishna. So her Saki, Lalita Saki, she suggested that um, Radharani's feelings of separation could be mitigated if she just wrote a letter to Krishna. That's a way of contacting someone. She said, just write a letter to Krishna. So Radharani thought about it for a while and then she agreed. And dipping, it's described dipping um, a pen in ink, she started to write a letter to Krishna on the petal of a lotus flower. Jai Shri Vrindavan Dham. <laughs> she wrote a letter to Krishna on the petal of a lotus flower. But as um, tears fell from her eyes, she only got as far as penning the syllable Krish, meaning the three letters K-R-S. That makes a syllable, Krish. And that was all. That's all she wrote was Krish. And just by writing that syllable, Krish, it's described a number of ecstatic uh, emotions overpowered her. And it's it's written that in the syllable in the syllables in the syllable Krish, Radharani. It's very deep. Radharani saw Krishna's form, qualities, pastimes, and sublime abode. What's more, um, by writing that syllable Krish, she entered into Krishna's heart, saw his love, understood his feelings of separation and felt his love for her. In the syllable Kadesh, Radharani saw that one who attracts all the gopis, the cowherd boys, the cows, the calves, the birds, the, the beasts <laughs> of Braj, the plants, and the rivers of Vrindavan. And the Acharyas say that, quote, by seeing and perceiving all these things, Shimati Radharani um, sat still for an entire pahara. She was so mesmerized by what she saw as a right, as a result of writing that syllable krish, that she sat for an entire pahara. Now, when I read that, I was thinking, "Wow, what, what's a pahara? How long did how long did how long did she sit?" And I found out that a pahara is um, three hours long. So again, this is very deep, it's, it's esoteric, but even we, as aspiring devotees, we can appreciate the syllable Krish as well in our, in our own way. By a very famous verse um, penned by Sri Rupa Goswami. It's in Chaitanya Charitamrita Anjilila 199 a favorite amongst shloka wallas. Quote, I do not know how much nectar the two syllables Krishna, two syllables Krishna, have produced. When the holy name of Krishna is chanted, it appears to dance within the mouth. We then desire many, many, many mouths. When that name enters the holes uh, of the ears, we desire many millions of ears. And when the holy name dances in the courtyard of the heart, it conquers the activities of the mind, and therefore all the senses become inert. 
So of course we may not experience, you know, this the two syllables Krishna just like Rupa Goswami does, but we all have deep appreciation for the holy name. Otherwise, why have we devoted our lives to chanting Hare Krishna and to spreading the the names of Krishna everywhere? Our whole lives res- resolve, uh, resound around the holy name. We we chant and we distribute the chanting in various ways. So yes, we have an experience of what it means to um, to um, come in contact with that syllable Krish. All glory to Sri Rupa Goswami. So after Sri Rad had, had only written a Krish, the syllable Krish, after three hours, Vishaka said to Lalita, Friend, at this rate the letter will take millenniums to write. <laughs> so Lalita turned to Sri Radha and she said, O Radha, beloved of Krishna, quote, You've composed a very nice letter. I think you have actually included everything that needs needs to be said and more. It's profound. In repeated lifetimes, Krishna may someday come to the end of this letter. And what was the letter? Kadesh. <laughs> and Vishak, Vishaka, she added, quote, Yes, it, it's more than enough. To the wise and learned, just a few syllables of Krishna's name uh, says everything. Let us send this excellent, excellent letter to Krishna through a reliable messenger. So immediately, Vishaka called the most reli- reliable messenger, and that was Rati Manjari. And taking the letter from Sri Radha's hand, um, Vishaka rolled it, put it into a rolled the, the, the lotus petal, <laughs> put it into a, a golden container and handed it to Rati Manjari, who touched the container to her forehead and then hid it within her cloth. Then Srimati Radharani reached out and took Rati Manjari's hand and it's described that neither of them spoke. Rather, Sri Radha simply looked into Rati's eyes, into Rati Manjari's eyes, for a very long time. Now, in, in Vrindavan Leelas, it, it said that, quote, the senders of hand-delivered letters usually give instructions to their messengers in the silent language of glances. So this is Radha's um, letter, this is Radha's message to Krishna, <laughs> and she's entrusted this precious letter which says everything into the hands of the messenger who is Rati Manjari. So she wants to give Rati Manjari um, instructions in, in delivering this message. So how does she do it? Quote, the senders of hand-delivered letters in Vrindavan um, usually give instructions to their messengers in the silent language of glances. She simply glanced into the eyes of Rati Manjari. <laughs> wow. So then Sri Radha, she let go of Rati Manjari's hand. And Rati Manjari, along with a, a few close friends, she left to find Krishna somewhere it's described in the, pa- the pasture lands of Vrindavan. That's where Krishna spends most of his time, actually, herding cows with his coward boyfriends in, in Braj. So it's, it's said that Rati Manjari had no idea where Krishna was, but she was 100% convinced that from within her, within her heart, Sri Radha would guide her so that not a moment would be lost. From within her heart, Sri Radha would guide her so that not a moment would be lost. Sri Bindavan Dham Ki. Now that day, Krishna himself was also overwhelmed with feelings of separation from Srimati Radharani. No time scale is given. It doesn't mention, you know, how many hours or days or weeks they may have been separated, but that's irrelevant because we know from the prayers of Mahaprabhu and his Shikshastakam that um, even a moment separation from Krishna is unbearable. 
it seems like millenniums or thousands of years to the devotees or whatever it was. Krishna was also feeling overwhelmed with feelings of separation. You know, out in the pasturing grounds, <laughs> he was with his friends and they were herding cows somewhere, but um, his mind and heart were with Sri Radha. So at one point, um, his cowherd friend Shubal um, noticed, Krish noticed Krishna's dejected state. And he said, quote, friend, what's wrong? Obviously you're distressed. Please tell us what's wrong. And Madhu Mangal, who was, was always there, he added, Krishna, your peacock feather and flower garland fell to the ground some time ago, but you didn't even notice. Hey, Gopal, what's going on? But these are coward boys. So, although they're very close coward boys, they're, they're the ones who carry the messages. They're the messengers from Krishna to Radha, as Radha has her messengers from herself to Krishna. So these boys are very tight with Krishna. But Krishna, he said, uh, oh, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. I'm okay. But Subal insisted. Krishna, he said, you can't hide from us. We're your close friends. We can see into your heart. I thought that was so nice. The intensity of the love of Krishna for his Brajabhasis and the Brajabhasis for Krishna. That we can understand how Krishna can see into their hearts. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But it appears, it appears those Brajabhasis can also see into the heart of Krishna. This is bhakti. This is the highest level of love. So he said, Krishna, you can't hide from us. We're your friends. We can see into your heart. So, so Krishna started crying. <laughs> he started crying. And, and that startled Subal. So Subal said, Hey, Govinda, what are these tears? Why are you crying? Oh, friend, you're my life. Seeing you in such a state breaks my heart into a hundred pieces. I can't see, stand to see you cry. Govinda, for your happiness, I would walk to the end of the earth, ends of the earth and back and give my, give my life up a thousand times. Tell me, what is it you want? And I will get it for you. Reveal your pain to me and I will cure it. So rubbing his eyes, Krishna said, my friends, Every morning as I enter the forest, a girl comes into my vision. Endowed with magical charms, she enters my heart and enchants my mind. Though I play my flute and tend the cows, I cannot think of anything but her. So Sub Subal said, who is this girl, Krishna? What does she look like? So Krishna, he closed his eyes and he said, my friends, listen, I can say that she shines like lightning. Her sari is beautiful like a morning cloud. Her ornaments are like swans and her beauty is unlimited. So then Subhav started laughing and he said, Sham, I know who your beloved is. Who else could it be but Shri Radha, the daughter of King Brishabhanu. The beauty you speak of is to be found in her alone and no one else. Then Madhu Mangal, he spoke up. Krishna, fear not. With my command of Vedic spells and skill in mixing potions, I shall bring this girl to you without delay. I will gather herbs from the forest and chant the necessary mantras at once. And Subal added, Krishna, on the strength of my arms, which never fail in subduing demons, I vow to you that we will arrange a meeting with your beloved. She will become a flower garland very soon around your neck. <laughs> wow, special coward boys, special, special God, Krishna. And then at that very moment that the boys 
stop speaking, Rati Manjari arrives with, with her girlfriends. And seeing this, you know, how these gopis had arrived, on, obviously for a special mission, um, Madhu Mongol, he bragged. He said, Krishna, you, you see my friend? Just witness the mystic power of a pure brahmana. Simply by my desire, these girls have appeared. So then Rati Manjari, she came forward, and from a basket on her arm, she handed Madhu Mangal a garland that was, quote, prepared by Sri Radha and was still fragrant by her touch. I thought it was nice, the etiquette. That she didn't come directly, you know, to Krishna. She took the garland and gave it to the servant to give to the master. So beautiful Vedic culture. See, so Madhu Mangal, then he, he placed the garland around Krishna's neck. And um, Krishna, then he eagerly inquired from, from Rati Manjari, my dear young lady, please tell me, how is my dear most Shimati Radharani and what is she doing? So Rati Manjari, she replied, Krishna, in the madness of her separation from you, what is she doing? She's churning water in a yogurt pot. You know, you churn milk in a, in a yogurt pot to, to make um, milk sweets. <laughs> you don't churn water. She's churning water in a yogurt pot. But, oh, joy of brudge, she continued. Don't be sad. Your beloved desires to meet you, and for that reason, she has written you a letter. So hearing this, Krishna suddenly jumped up and he said, A letter? Oh, Sri Radha has written me a letter? And while Krishna watched excitedly, Rati Manjari reached into her apron. She pulled out that golden container and brought forth the lotus petal letter the lotus petal letter that Sri Radha had written Krishna. And she passed it to Krishna as if it were, as it was, a, a, a priceless treasure. Getting a little chilly here. So Krishna looked at the lotus petal in awe. Then he removed a, a gunja necklace from his neck and garlanded um, Rati Manjari in appreciation. The messenger got some mercy. Then in great anticipation, and, but overwhelmed with emotion, Krishna handed the letter to Madhu Mangal. And he said, Dear friend, please read this letter. I have no doubt it must be a reservoir of nectar for the ears. So Madhu Mangal, he eagerly accepted the letter, but upon reading it, all he saw was the syllable Krish and nothing else. Now, it's... We often describe, you know, Madhu Mangal, he's always greedy for sweets and he's always proud to declare that he's a Brahmana and he's very funny and humorous. But the Acharyas also say that he's a, quote, a peerless connoisseur of rasa. Madhu Mangal. He's a peerless connoisseur of rasa. So he thought at that moment, only Krishna is qualified to read this letter. So he said out loud, Krishna, this is an exceedingly long letter. <laughs> then Krishna, so Krishna said, then read it, Madha Mangal. But Madha Mangal, he handed the letter to Krishna saying, quote, Krishna, better you read it. This sort of letter is best read only by the one for whom it is intended. So as Krishna took the letter, he felt his heart began to beat very strongly. So he said, quote, As the full moon in the month of Jeshta causes violent waves in the Ganga, so does Radha act upon my heart. Wow. As the full moon in the month of Jeshta causes violent waves in the Ganga, so does Radha act upon my heart. So 
seeing Krishna's excitement, Madhu Mangal, he spoke up. He said, Krishna, there are so many beautiful uh, gopis in Vrindavan. Why do you love only Radha with such feeling? Why is it that you have, you have such intense feelings just for this particular gopi? So Krishna smiled and he answered, Madhu, in Radha there resides such sweetness that upon seeing her beautiful lotus eyes, I feel like rejecting the moon. If you simply think about Radha, you too will know something about her glory. So by this time, Subal was, he was getting impatient. <laughs> so he said, Krishna, what does the letter say? It's starting to rain now. <laughs> it's very auspicious. It doesn't rain this time of year here in North India. It's a big storm outside, outside actually. I hope you, it's not disturbing for you. Really raining. So Subal he was getting impatient. He said, um, Krishna, what does the letter say? So Krishna looked lovingly at the letter and all he saw before him was the syllable Kurish and nothing more. However, to him, that syllable was, quote, as effulgent as a hundred suns and cooling as a hundred moons. And not getting an answer to his question, Subal inquired again, Krishna, what does the letter say? But when Krishna tried to speak, his throat choked up with emotion. <coughs> and he, <coughs> he cleared his, sorry, he cleared his voice, <coughs> wiped his eyes, and he read aloud what, Rod, what, what Shimati Radharani had meant to convey with the syllable Krish. <laughs> he said, Subal, this is what Shirada has written. Quote, O supremely beautiful Shamsundar, this letter is not made of words. Your humble maidservant petitions you from the innermost core of her heart. Please spare a few moments to hear her plea. O Krishna, the artistic loveliness of your form is permanently etched in my mind. Because your beauty causes me constant distress, I run here and there for relief, but wherever I go, you block my path. This is my dilemma. Tell me what to do. Your youthful, youthful beauty surpasses all things in this world. If the gently splashing waves of your smile make Kamadev faint from bliss, what will become of me? Each time you smile and smile and smile, your limbs sway to and fro. Sharp arrows shoot from your eyes. Jasmine garlands sway on your chest and tilak glistens on your forehead. Oh, what a wonder. I do not know what happened when I first saw you. It felt as if an arrow had pierced my life's breath. My normally peaceful composure fled to a faraway place and my restlessness took hold of me. Now for no apparent reason, I constantly weep. Fearful of what my elders might say, I told no one of my plight and I simply hide in my room. No one knows what has happened to me, not even I. <laughs> it's pouring rain now. <laughs> Auspicious this time of year. I think the demigods are showering flowers hearing these glories of Shivindavan Dam, hearing the glories of Krishna from the lips of Shimati Radharani. <laughs> so when Krishna finished reading, Madhu Mangal said, Friend, her love is indeed great. You are uniquely fortunate. Such a heartfelt letter, soaked in emotion, deserves a proper reply. Krishna, you must now write to Radha and fulfill her heart's desire. So taking the cue, Rati Manjari, she reached into her basket and she produced another lotus petal. 
another pen, and some more ink. And she gave them to Krishna. So listen to this. <laughs> how Krishna is overwhelmed by Radha's love, how he's controlled by Radha's love. How indeed Radharani is Madan Mohan Mohini. Krishna thought for a moment, and then very slowly on that lotus petal, he wrote the syllable Ra. R-A. Ra. And he stopped. And that's all he wrote. As Radha had only written Kurish, all he could write was Ra. But why? Well, this part's really deep, so you have to, li have to listen carefully because the ex the, this is the Acharya's explanation, which we worship. The Acharyas explain because the syllable Ra was a crystal ball in which Krishna could see danced fatigued gopis, water sports in the Jamuna, a dinner beneath the stars, and the calm before sunrise that only lovers know. <laughs> the divine love of the divine couple. <laughs> What's more, the Acharyas say, these letters, shaped like a string of pearls, were a hidden path to Sri Radha, a bridge that spanned the chasm between separation and meeting, a mantra that would award Krishna full freedom. Wow. Those letters shaped like a string of pearls were a hidden path to Sri Radha, a bridge that spanned the chasm between separation and meeting, a mantra that would award Krishna full freedom. Finally, the Charyas say, Ra, like Radha, <laughs> Radha acted like a wise sage who detected Krishna's, Krishna's heart's longing, who knew of his love for her, who championed his eagerness for meeting her, and who advised Krishna how to realize his goal of again meeting Srimati Radharani. But most important, it said, more important than anything else, Ra declared Krishna's submission to Vrindavan Eshwari Srimati Radharani. And that's the purpose of sharing this wonderful pastime. So convinced that the syllable Ra alone would uh, secure a meeting with his beloved, Krishna handed his letter on the lotus petal, Ra, to Mata Mongol. Then it's described that um, as birds in their purchase jostled with one another from a vantage point in the trees to try and read the letter, Mata Mongol rolled up the lotus petal, touched it to his forehead, and gave it to Rati Manjari, who received it with great respect. Then she placed the lotus petal in the gold container, put it into her cloth, then she bowed down to Krishna and his friends, and then, quote, like the morning mist vanished along with the other girls, leaving only dainty footprints behind. Rati Manjari bowed down before Krishna and his friends and then, like the morning mist, vanished along with the other girls, leaving only dainty footprints behind. So, then Krishna, he left to go back to his friends and his cows, confident that the power of Radha's name would fulfill his desire to be with her again. Meanwhile, Rati Manjari returned to Vrindavan Eshwari, where she gave Krishna's letter um, to Radharani. So Radharani slowly uh, unrolled the lotus petal, and although it only contained the syllable Ra, she understood its deeper purport. So when her friends asked her to share the letter with them, she said, oh, Krishna has concisely written as follows. Krishna has concisely written as follows. And she read the letter as she saw it. 
she read Krishna's revealing his heart to her, Krishna said, oh, or the letters Ra, <laughs> oh, beautiful princess of Varshana, from the day I first saw you, my life has changed. I was a carefree coward boy playing in the fields of Braja, but now I'm held captive with a tiny hope that you may bless me with a casual sidelong glance. What wings are to a bird? What the sun is to the world. What the soul is to the body. You are to me. If you think I should live, if you think I deserve to see you in person, then meet me by the bank of the Jamuna. <laughs> right beneath the Kadamba trees, where cuckoos sing and, and bees hum, please allow me to serve you, for you are the queen of my heart. My dear Radharani, my worshipable deity, I am your servant eternally. Is she not Madan Mohan Mohini? Yes, she certainly is. So then Sri Radha, she fell silent and she placed her letter on her lap and looking around to all the gopis, she said happily, he has accepted me, he has accepted me. Oh my friends, I must meet Krishna by the Jamuna tonight. Please help me to look my very best. So after selecting clothes and ornaments that would be most pleasing to Krishna, Shirada bathed, anoint, uh, which Shirada was bathed, anointed and, and dressed by her um, happy friends. And when the, the gopis had finished, they all stood back to see their work. Then Shirada, she stood up and she said, my friends, do you think he'll like me? <laughs> and it's described that when, when Radha said that, Vishaka wiped tears of wonder from her face. Vishaka wiped tears of wonder from her face. Now, that night at Nandagram, where Krishna lives, Madhi had, had put Krishna to sleep, but as soon as she left, um, he climbed out his bedroom window and chanting Shirada's names. He went, alone, he went alone to the river Jamuna. And um, the Acharyas write, just as the written syllables of the divine couple's names had conveyed their mutual affection to each other, those same sil syllables, when sung by Krishna on the way to the meeting and Radha singing Krishna's name on the way to the meeting, those um, same syllables when sung directed both Radha and Krishna to their meeting place on the banks of the sacred Jamuna River where they exchanged loving glances and in an atmosphere of laughter and joy they mitigated their feelings of separation during a nighttime of Brahma. So concludes that beautiful pastime. Wow. <laughs> so this beautiful pastime not only shows that by her unique love, Radha, is without doubt um, Madan, Mohi, Madan Mohan Mohini. But it also reveals that their transcendental names, or even a part of their transcendental names, Krish Arad, Krishna Aradha, are full of unlimited wonders. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare the wonder of chanting Hare Krishna. Wow, so many lessons <laughs> today. So I would like to conclude this little series on the glories of Madan Mohan and his beautiful consort, Shimati Radharani, um, with a beautiful Ashtakam. By, again, we're calling upon our beloved Srila Vishwanath Chakavari Thakur. He wrote this Ashtakam. Shri Madan Gopaladev Ashtaka. Remember that originally Madan Mohan was called uh, Madan Gopal. So it's fitting. A beautiful Ashtaka. Glorifying Madan Mohan. What a way to end. So, he writes, 
O oh, Madonna Gopala, please place your lotus feet, which are marked with a thunderbolt, lotus, conch shell, water pot, and fish, which eclipse all splendors, and which with soft souls have conquered Vrindavan's forests in my heart. Please protect me, for I am now your home, meaning that Krishna resides in his heart. He he's captured Krishna in his heart with his bhakti, and he, he won't let Krishna go. With every step, splendid garlands of the cooling moonlight of your toenail moons and the words of your talkative anklets bring happiness to the path of my ears, eyes, and breath. O oh, Madonna Gopal, pre please protect me, for I am now your home. O oh, Madonna Gopal, as you plunge me in the sweetness of the glittering golden earrings of your cheeks, in the tilt of your jeweled crown, and in the handsomeness of your expertly moving, restless eyes, Please protect me, for I am now your home. You place a flute on the red of your lips, which are worshipped by the splendor of your smile and decorated with the effulgence of teeth that defeat the splendor of rubies. O oh, Madan Gopal, whose pastimes cannot be understood by the people, please protect me, for I am now your home. You are splendid with golden earrings, many necklaces and garlands, dancing anklets and bracelets, and many other jewel ornaments, which are themselves decorated by the splendor of your form. O oh, Madonna Gopal, please protect me, for I am now your home. O oh, Madonna Gopal, with your merciful glances, which are arbors of millions of celestial desire trees, with the new blossoms of the splendor of your face, which eclipses millions of moons, and with the candela flowers of your hands, which have nails to attack millions of comedies, please protect me, for I am now your home. O Madonna Gopal, who appeared in a human-like form and was served by Shiva and all the demigods, O merciful one, who showed the earth eternal spiritual love. Please protect me, for I am now your home. On the Jamuna shore is a shady Kadamba grove and a glorious jeweled palace where you, where you eternally play with Radha and Alita. O Madan Gopal, please protect me, for I am now your home. Into the nectar lake of love for your lotus feet you quickly plunge a sincere devotee who reads these eight nectar verses glorifying you. O Madan Gopal, please protect me, for I am now your home. Wow, so much bless. Shri Brajabhumi Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Srila Shanatam Goswami Ki Shri Prabhupada Ki Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan Ki Shri Shri Madan Mohan Mohini Brindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki Shri Shri Gorni Thai Ki Shri Krishna Balaram Ki Shri Shri Radhasham Sundar Ki Brindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki Shri Goloka Vrindavan Dham Ki Back home, back to Godhead Ki Let's share all these wonderful pastimes and all the philosophy which supports it and helps us realize these pastimes and when to enter these pastimes Let's not be misers. Let's um, be the well-wishers of the people of this world and share Vrindavan Dham with them. If only by the loud chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, or by the Brihat Madanga of the distribution of Srila Prabhupada's books. In this way, the unfortunate people of Kali Yuga will become most fortunate. And um, one day we'll have a risk on in the spiritual sky and we'll see all these things, not with our ears, but with our eyes. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, Hare Krishna. <laughs> see you in a few days. Thank you so much.